shut up compressor. Okay, so we've got two victories and one, I guess, something to be aware of, a yellow flag, perhaps, on all that brain-melting stuff. So first victory is back here, the lower avionics bay, this thing that's supposed to be all opened up and sitting out like... That's useful, you can see my fucking hand. Kind of sitting open like this. Um, thankfully, has the wherewithal to sit on the lower border of the air brakes and so it fits pretty much the way it should. To do a little bit of cleanup, but nothing too bad. And I figured if this is an opening door on these things and they kind of look pounded together anyway at this point in their life, then sure. The other win is I think I'm going to be able to basically get a pretty decent fit on this little turret housing thing by basically gluing it to one of the radome halves. That's kind of how I approached it on this instance here. And the challenge that we have is not so much that. As you can see, it, it, there's no need for it to fit all the way over this at all um, in any way, shape, or form. It very slightly seats on it, but it's not like it's not something that we would glue to the nose gear bay. Challenge though is these little sort of bits of the fuselage on either side of the nose gear bay really want to splay out. And if you look sort of you know, down the front, you can see them sticking up, and those need to be pushed down. basically like so and held there while they set up and cure and so that is one that I have no fucking idea how I'm going to do that without getting fingerprints all over this and making a giant mess so I will be thinking on that that is a mystery to solve but once that happens we've got a pretty decent join with the radome the uh, port side is much, much worse than the starboard side. The starboard side, if we go over here, that actually looks pretty natural. But as you can see, it does sit a little bit lower, so there is, no matter what, going to be some sanding in here to at least fix out this forward contour. I don't think the aft contour matters all that much, because uh, it's going to have the landing gear doors and shit going on. That forward one should be a bit more flush with what's happening with the radome. So... That's that. I already knew there was going to be a lot of cleanup with the radome anyway, so just knowing there'll be more, no big deal. So I think with that, my next point of business is to get that thing glued in, and I'm actually looking down here. Let's see if I can zoom in so you can see what I'm seeing. So, maybe? Okay, cool. So, way down in here... This is sort of the border where that housing sits in the radome. And right here, it's just barely interfering with, or being interfered with by one of those little bracing strips I installed to help fit the radomes to the fuselage halves. Over on the other side, it looks like it's basically said, fuck you, get out of my way, and everything's happy. So I just need to go and trim that a little bit, and I think that'll do a lot for making sure that everything fits up the right way. So I think once I really start to get this thing together, I might have to switch over to the GoPro or something because holy God, it takes up a lot of, a lot of bench space. Anyway, this is the intruder currently sitting on its legs. I wanted to keep doing the sort of center of gravity testing. And the cool thing was it sat on its legs with no weight until I put stabilizers on it. Then it immediately became a tail sitter. Now there's still quite a bit more weight that's going to be going up front. There's the cockpit obviously there's all the stuff around the engines but I want to be sure that it's not going to be sitting on its tail 
and it's gonna be too late to go back and add stuff after too long. So what I've got in here, let's get this giant bastard out, is this heavy ass, I don't know, it says one. I don't know if that's like one gram or something. It's gotta be more than one gram, right? <laughs> Anyway, it by itself is not enough to hold the nose entirely down, as you can see. If I move it forward up there, it almost is. It's just on the edge. But I mean, that's a structurally not the most stable place. Now, my other options are, I've got these little eggs, right? And I can just plop them in here, and that'll do it. Uh, the challenge is, how the fuck am I supposed to access that area once the cockpit's installed? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, because the cockpit has to sit on this damn thing. And I guess I could come in around behind the engines and all that, or, yeah, the intakes and all that, but that's... It's kind of like a blind Hail Mary to just hope that shit sticks in there, and I really don't want these weights banging around if I don't have to have them banging around. So, one option I do have, and I may well take it, is to kind of hammer it a bit and shove it in this little hole that we've got going on right here. That would almost certainly work. You know, I just had an even better idea than hammering the fuck out of one of these things. So if you look in here at the nose gear bay, there are a bunch of little depressions all over the place. There's obviously the big one up front here, but we've also got this one, got this one back here, got another one on this side. We've got a cut in over here, cut in over here, I guess for the internal details that you're seeing on the inside of the bay. So I think I can easily get this equivalent of weight onto that thing with some liquid gravity, which is basically just little tiny heavy ass balls of shit. Put them in there with like a glue mixture to hold them in place, blah, blah, blah. Hell, I could probably even put them in there and just put tape over it. Dam up the front of this with a piece of styrene because it's not interfering with anything up here. And fill that, do the same thing, just kind of glue it down, make it all happy. I think that would work. Okay, so I've added the liquid gravity, which is basically, as you can see here, just a bunch of little metal balls to the various depressions on the top of the nose gear bay. Now I'm gonna take some uh, VMS Flexi CA, which is one of the thinner CAs I've got. Accelerator to lock it in. We have, our, we have ourselves a slightly weightier nose area. Fantastic. Okay, I think I've got the turret piece about as well installed as it's going to get. Kind of juggling all the shit happening here. So it's time to anchor it in, and I think I'm going to anchor it in on this starboard side. Love that sound of shit just... Oh, that was me hitting the camera. Fun. So, <clears throat> challenge is I just want to get this little bit of it sorted out. I want to keep it so that I can still get at other parts of it when I need to. Especially back here, that's going to take its own piece of force. So, I need to glue it, but I need to avoid going full on capillary action. It's still going to take probably some shimming, probably a little bit of filling. But this is the price of prioritizing fit elsewhere. A little bit of CA in there too. I do not want this thing working free.
I'm going to hold this for a few more minutes, let it do its thing, and then we're going to move on to probably doing some flat coating of things, including the fuselage sidewalls, um, the instrument panel combing, and the seats. Alright, so I'm planning on having to do touch-ups and things like that to the gear bays once everything kind of gets built up because, you know, you've got especially this edge back here hitting up against the fuselage. You've got this that's going to need cleaning up. However, this ceiling part up here basically slides way into the fuselage to the point where it's going to be inaccessible for any sort of realistic painting. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of work to kind of get the gear base a bit stronger with the white because as you can see it's not the best. Um, I definitely have asked this five years ago. So first, because I want them to be a little bit dirtier and grungier, I want to lay down a little bit of MRP beige. Now, in reality, the intruder's gear bay is much more of a rat's nest for cabling than what we've got here. I'm still making up my mind what I want to do about that. Right now I'm leaning towards fuck it. Um, I've never been a big fan of super detailing gear bays anyway. And it just seems like a lot more work for not that much reward. Cockpit's one thing because you're going to see all that. This stuff though, not so much. My other hesitation for adding a whole bunch of wiring in here is you can see various holes and things where stuff kind of hooks in, and that is landing gear shit, and I don't want to interfere with the landing gear at all. That is not my goal. All right. Okay, next we're going to have a go with this bleached clear doped linen. This is a really good sort of dirty white shade. It's one of the things MRP is awesome at, is these kind of not whites and not blacks. Okay, I think that's looking pretty decent. Let's switch over to Insignia White now. Okay, just in case I missed it because my dumbass didn't hit record, we sprayed another layer with MRP Insignia White, MRP 135, and we get to this sort of nicely grungy, warm, white-looking color, which I think fits the gear base just about perfectly. And if you compare it to what I did five years ago with the gear struts, which are a very, honestly, cool white, I think that the warmer white of the gear base here looks a lot more appropriate, so I imagine at some point I'm going to be masking and respraying these. But that's for a later day. For now, time to clean out the airbrush and get ready to spray some flat shit. Okay, it's time for clears, and we're going to start with some MRP semi mat. This is for essentially... <coughs> fucking hell. Moving on to some clear coating, we're going to start with MRP semi mat. This is for essentially the seat frames, and the non-cushiony things of the ejection seats. Okay, there's one. Do a quick side by side. As you can see it's definitely pulling the sheen down compared to this one. Quite a bit. And now it's time for MRP 127, their good old matte finish. Let's 
So look at the way that just kills off the sheen. Very nice. All right, seat time. Nice, that flattened it out wonderfully. Okay. Got a little bit more detail work to go in here, but other than that, it's almost ready to be mounted. Of course, we still have to... Uh, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and hit the throttle a little bit. Okay, there we go. Before we do that, we have to install the weights and all that kind of stuff, so a little bit more to go, but we are making progress. Okay, now it's time to finish off the combing, and that involves installing the HUD shit. And as part of that, I'm going to be using a little bit of this Hasegawa polarizing film. stuff is cool. Under uh, different backgrounds, it changes color. So under white, it looks pink. But then when you put it on a black background, it turns green. So we've got a black background in there. How about that? Now I'm going to try something new. And that is this VMS Transparafix. And I should probably just to be on the safe side. Double check this on, try to double check this on stuff that's been painted already. Oh, that's goopier than I was expecting. That's really fucking goopy. Hmm. The last thing I want is a stringy mess. So we're not going to use that. Not for this. Back to the good old gator grip. So because this is just going in a damn hole, there's really no need for peeling off adhesive backing or any of that kind of stuff. Just add a little dollop there. Come on, leave the tweezers. Go in your hole. Good lord, that looks awesome. <laughs> Again, another little dollop. 
right on top. So that we can install. Maybe install. There we go. The hood lens. Cool. So once that dries clear, that'll look awesome. Now we're also going to go ahead and knock out. Come on. I really need a new bottle of this stuff. So I'm also going to go ahead and install, even though I think it's a bit thick for our purposes. The HUD glass. Again, once that all clear, once that all dries, it'll dry clear and everything will be great. All right, what else do we have to do? Well, do a little bit more in the cockpit. So I had intended a lot of these little tiny things to act sort of as like indicator lights. And we need to light them up now. The plan is to come in here, get a little bit of paint. Okay. Let those sit for a few minutes and we're gonna put some clears on top of them. And then the cockpit will be done. Okay, so I was all set to go and then I had a June bug fly into my fucking face. So, got a bit distracted and discombobulated there for a second. Gonna hope it doesn't happen while I am over this with a loaded brush. But real quickly, we're gonna be using AK's clear orange and clear red from their real color line to do these little dots. Now the reason I, I'm using this stuff and not Tamiya clears is, I don't know, these don't seem quite as syrupy to me. And for something like this, that matters a lot. Pretty good about staying where you put them. I'm sorry, this is, I'm hoping that I'm capturing this well on camera for y'all. Yeah, this plus the seats. Seat one. God, I love the fabric detail on these things. They make me want to build more intruders. All right, so we got the seats. this front panel, even though we're waiting for that glue to go clear, you can see how, uh, how 
awesome that prismatic film is doing down in there. There you have it. We have a finished cockpit. <sighs> Out of there, Flurm. You have no business being here. So. I will take that. Really cannot wait until that glue goes fully transparent, though. Sweet.